Hey everybody, welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. We're out in the workshop today by my quail. Today is an exciting day for me with the quail. You may remember about eight weeks ago, we hatched out almost a hundred uh, jumbo quail eggs from my Shire farm. Four different varieties of jumbo quail. We had a great hatch rate and we ended up with, I think somewhere in the high 80s for the number of chicks that were actually hatched. So that was great. Those chicks are now eight weeks old or just about eight weeks old, a few days shy. We're starting to get eggs out of all four varieties. The males are starting to crow, so we know that they've reached maturity. And so today is the day that we're finally gonna separate males from females of the different varieties. We're gonna get them into their breeder cages where they can live and be our new breeders here on the farm. Let's take a walk around first. I'll show you the four varieties that we're gonna be sexing today uh, and what we're gonna be doing with them after we separate them. All right, let's start with the jumbo white quail. Let me grab one out of here. Now we get a lot of questions about what kind of noises do quail make? You're gonna hear probably a lot of it today. So uh, that sound that you've been hearing mostly in the background, that's, that's the crow of the roosters. So if you live in town, if you live in an apartment or you live somewhere where you're not supposed to be having you know, farm animals, that's one of the reasons that quail is a good alternative because they don't really sound like a rooster and most places have no rules against having quail. So here's what the jumbo whites look like. They're solid white, but they have a one brown dot on the back of their heads or on the top of their head. I don't know yet if that one's a male or a female. We'll put them back in. Oh, there's a male right there for sure. All right, so that is the jumbo whites. So we'll be coming back to them in a little bit. We got our very first egg out of these guys today. They were the very last ones to start laying eggs. I was actually worried of like, what if we have 40 males in here? But uh, we got an egg today. So I know at least there's one, one female in here. I'm sure there's a lot more. On the next cage over here, these are the jumbo white wings. Now these quail up here on the top, these are my current breeders. These are all that I've had up until this point that are laying eggs. Uh, you can see their eggs here. We've got some standard eggs and then we've got some of them in these cages that are laying the blue eggs. So in this cage, we have the jumbo white wings. They look a lot like a standard, what's called feral quail. So they look a lot like the jumbo wilds, except you can see that they have white, white wings on the tips. Other than that, they look like the jumbo wilds. Now this one would be a male, but we'll get back to that in a little bit. Now these down in the bottom of this cage, these are the jumbo wilds. They look a lot like those white wings, except they don't have the white wings, they just have brown wings. These are what we actually ended up with the least amount of uh, after our hatch. But you can see they, they're just a, a standard Caternix quail, but they should be quite a bit bigger than standard. But as far as coloring, they look like standard. So that's three, and then the last ones are in this cage right here, and they are the Jumbo Egyptians. They look a lot like the wild as well, except they're quite a bit lighter in color. As you can see, they're, they're a lot lighter in color, but they are gorgeous birds, and they're actually laying the best so far. I think yesterday I got five eggs out of this cage, four or five eggs out of this cage, so, um, so everybody is doing well, everybody is growing the way they should be, and within the next couple weeks, for sure, we should be getting a ton of eggs. So today we're gonna to be separating these into breeder cages. What I'm hoping for is 10 females and two males in each cage, but it, we'll just have to see what we end up with if we can make those numbers work right. If we end up with you know eight females and two males, that's fine too. Um, but I'm hoping for 10 females and two males in each cage. So we're gonna get started, but before we do that, I wanna show you guys the new cage that I made and how I solved a problem that I've been having since the very beginning of raising quail. So this is the project I've been working on for the last few days out here in the shop, building a third breeder cage. 
And now this design is actually uh, a design from Terry over at Caternix Corner. If you haven't checked out his YouTube channel, I highly recommend if you're into quail to go check out Terry's channel. He does a great job. And this is one of the cages that he uh, has plans for and shows how to build on his, on his channel. So go check that out. So let me show you some of the ins and outs of these cages. First of all, um, I made them with slanted floors so that they do have the egg roll out so that the eggs should roll to the front here. And then we can just collect them without having to go inside of the cages. I've also decided to use the modified J feeder uh, system for these. Basically what this is, is this is just our, like a rabbit feeder. We actually had these left over from our rabbits. And then on the inside, you can see that I've attached some extra pieces of this one by two wire so that the quail can't stick their heads all the way in to be able to fling food everywhere. So I'm hoping that that will really cut down on the amount of wasted feed. I really don't want to use the other style feeder that I like, the kind that I have in my grow out cages, because they sit on the floor and then they would interrupt the eggs being able to roll out. So this kind hooking on the front hopefully will be a good solution to that. These will be using pans. These are actually uh, oil pans that you can pick up at like O'Reilly's or uh, AutoZone, somewhere like that. And uh, these are about I think I paid $11.99 a piece for these here locally, but they are a great solution. And then they just slide in. We'll put a little bedding on those and that should do a good job of catching all of the poop as it falls out. And then you can see also on the inside, we have the uh, cup waterers, the automatic watering system. It just works off a gravity fed system with a bucket on the top of the cage. And I ordered those uh, from Winola Ranch, the same place I got my other cages. Uh, they sell a complete kit with all of the tubing and everything that you need to hook up for three cages. So uh, that was a great, great thing to do there. Let's walk back over to my other stacking cages. I'm gonna show you the issue that I was having uh, and how I finally came up with a good solution for it. All right, so here's the cages where we were a minute ago with some of the chicks in that we're gonna be separating today. Now in order for quail or really any poultry to continue to lay eggs consistently through the winter, they need light, they need supplemental light. For quail, we tried to keep the lights on for 14 hours a day, and that gives them plenty of light to keep laying consistently. The problem is with these stacking cages is that while the top cage may get plenty of light from just the overhead lights, the other cages, as you can see, as you go down, get less and less light. I tried to come up with ways that I could, you know, solve this problem, but because these cages are so short, which you need for quail as well, I didn't want to put like a standard light bulb in there. Uh, I tried kind of shining a light toward the cages, but that seemed like it was kind of blinding the quail. And so I finally came up with a solution that I've been using now for several weeks and is working great. Let me show you, first of all, the difference that it makes when I plug it in, and then I'll show you what the solution is. All right, so this is without the lights. And that is with the lights. So the solution for this problem are these right here. These are LED, uh, they're called ring lights. They're really for going around a camera for taking selfies and things like that, which I'm not into taking selfies of myself, but for raising quail, these are awesome. There is one modification that you need to make to these if you're gonna be using them on a timer like I do. I'm gonna show you how to do that today. But you can see that all I've done is I've zip tied these to the top of the cage. And then on the cages that have trays, you can see I've zip tied it on the inside of the cage below the tray. So it doesn't affect having the tray removed. Now the other really nice thing about these ring lights is first they're LED and they use very little power. That was another issue that I was having with trying to provide enough light for these guys is because as you know, I'm running this entire workshop off solar and be able to use big lights that would light up the entire shop all day long was killing my solar. So uh, by being able to use these ring lights, these use about five watts of energy per light, which is 
nothing. I mean, I can run a lot of these off my solar all day long and it does a really good job. So let's go over and I'll show you the modifications we need to make and uh, we'll get the last one of these hooked up. I have these in all the cages already, except I saved one to show you guys. All right, so a lot of what comes with these ring lights, we're not even gonna use. We're gonna set that aside. All we care about for our purposes today is the light itself. Now, if, if you plan on manually turning these on and off every day, uh, there's absolutely nothing you need to do. You can just hook this up exactly the way it is. And every day there's actually an on and off switch right here. You can come out and you can just turn that on. There's actually like three different modes. It can be like a natural light, a really bright white light or a colored light. So um, if, if that's the way you wanna do it, you can just plug this right in. It plugs into like a standard USB port or like a, a phone charger. And what I did is I actually ordered on Amazon these phone charge cubes that have three uh, places to plug things in. And that way I can have just one plug for all three cages in a set. So if, like I said, if you want to turn them on and off every day manually, just zip tie this to the top of your cage and you're ready to go. But if you're like me and you use everything on a timer, uh, because I have my lights come on at three o'clock in the morning, um, you do have to cut this on and off switch out of here and rewire it just a little bit, but it's super easy to do. Now, the reason that you need to remove the on and off switch is because what happens with these lights is when your timer shuts the lights off for the day and turns back on, it shuts the switch off too. So you would need to come out and actually hit the power button to turn them back on. By removing this inline switch right here, your timer itself is what's turning the light on and off. Uh, you're getting rid of the on and off switch here and you're just using your timer as the on and off switch. I hope that makes sense. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just take a wire cutters and we're gonna cut on both sides of that switch and we're gonna get that completely out of the way. Now the downside to this is you no longer have the three modes, the the natural light, the bright light, and the colored light. You only have the natural light, at least on all of them that I've bought so far, after you rewire it, it just comes on as the natural light, which to me is perfectly fine, and I'm happy with the way that that looks. So we've now got you know, our two pieces of wire, one end connected to the light yet, and then one end connected to the plug. We're gonna use a wire strippers, and we're gonna strip off just a couple inches of the casing on the wire. And we're gonna do that on both sides. And then you will notice that on the side with the light, there's three wires, but on the side with the plug, there's only two wires. What you're going to do is you're gonna connect the red and the white wire together with the red wire on this side. And then you're gonna connect the two black wires together on the other side like that. And that will give constant power to the light. So I've got my wire stripped. Again, you can see black, white, and red on this side, and then just black and red on this side. So we'll take the two reds and the white and we'll twist those together. And then we'll take our two black ones and we'll twist those together. And then what I do is I take some electrical tape and I'll wrap it around each separate set like this. And then I also fold those back and I'll just use another longer piece of electrical tape to tape those to the main. So we're just left with our wire looking like that. So we no longer have that switch. We now just have 
a direct wire going straight to the light. All right, let's take this over to the cage, the last cage that I have to do, and we'll put this inside the cage, and then we'll uh, plug it in and see how it works. All right, so the last one we have to do is this top one. Now, I'll be honest, I could probably get away without having a light on this top cage because it's already pretty lit up. But there are days, like right now, it's almost 60 degrees outside. We have the big door open in here. There's a ton of light coming into the workshop. But on a lot of days, especially in the winter, there's not a lot of light. And then these do come in handy. So I'm going to put one on the top, even, even though we could probably get away without it. Now, I don't know if I mentioned these I ordered on Amazon. Um, before Christmas, I was actually able to buy those first six for the first three, two cages that I have, or the first two stacks of cages that I have. I actually paid $7.99 a piece for them. I just ordered these three, and now they were $9.99. Still not bad, $10 per cage. Um, but if you watch for some deals, I'm sure you can find them go on sale again. I'll put those in our Amazon shop so you guys can take a look at those. And I'll put the uh, plugs that I bought too so you can see those. You can see I have my charging cube connected here to the side of the other cage. We'll plug that in. Now we've got all three lights for this cage plugged in. Let's go see how it looks. All right, so all three of them are on. Let me show you the difference with them off. Even here where it's fairly bright, they're in front of a window and that door. You can see there's still quite a difference when they're off versus when they're on. So I'm really happy with the way those ring lights have been working. Uh, if you're doing cages like this, I think it's definitely something you should try. All right, so now it's time to get to what we're actually here to do today, which is to start separating these quail. Now, there's really three ways to tell males from females when it comes to quail. Uh, the first is what's called feather sexing. In some varieties of quail, when they hit, hit maturity, or really with, with most feather sexable quail, by about three weeks old you can tell, uh, is that the males will look different than from the females. So you simply need to know the differences and then you can look at them and pick out males from females. So that is probably the easiest way and the earliest way to be able to tell. The second way is what's called vent sexing. Uh, vent sexing is for the varieties like the white ones where males and females look exactly the same. With vent sexing, you can actually flip them over, you push kind of at the vent or where their butt is, and some white foam will come out on the males. Uh, I'll show you more of that as we get over on that side. And then the third way is to wait until they reach maturity like these have now, and really just to stand there and watch them for a while and watch which ones start to crow. Uh, obviously, if they're crowing, it's a male. So uh, today we're going to do mostly feather sexing, except for the white ones. Those will do vent sexing and we'll watch for some of them to crow. So we're going to start with the jumbo wilds because they're, we have the least amount of those, so they'll be the fastest. They're also completely feather sexable, so they should be easy. Uh, but I wanted to show you guys, just while we were standing here talking, one of the Egyptians laid an egg. This is why I'm excited. One of the reasons I'm excited to get these uh, separated today so that they can get into the cages where the eggs will roll out. Um, the egg rollouts really make the eggs come out a lot cleaner. Now this one's clean because it was just laid, but uh, in these breeder or in these grow out cages, uh, a lot of times they'll get poop on them and things like that, which makes them less hatchable. So part of what we're doing here on the homestead is to, we want to start selling quail. We want to start selling quail chicks. We want to start selling quail breeders and we want to start selling fertile eggs and we can't do that if we have dirty eggs coming out of our cages so uh, we're excited to get that going uh, really today what we're doing is we're setting up our long-term breeder program here on the homestead and i'm excited to finally feel like we're headed in that direction that i've wanted to head for the last couple of years all right let's put this egg away and then we'll start sexing the jumbo wilds i wanted to show you guys all these cool uh, egg holders that one of our subscribers sent us. Uh, this is from Whiskey Tango Farms in Wisconsin. They make these, they have a 3D printer and they make these egg holders. I have these sitting out here, so as I'm working out here during the day, if I collect eggs, I can set them up here for the day. And then at the end of the day, I can just take everything in the house all at once. But aren't these cool? Uh, these are really neat egg holders that they made. So thank you guys so much for those. All right, so we're over at the cage with the uh, Jumbo Wilds. 
What our plan is going to be for right now is I've just got a container here. And we're going to just grab the, the quail out. If it's a male, it's going to go in here. If it's a female, it's going to go in this top cage right here. Once we see how many females we have, we'll determine how many males we're going to keep and put in with them. So let me grab a male and a female so we can show you guys the difference between a male and a female. So this is a male. And Sarah's here helping now. And let me grab one that I know for sure is a female. This is a female. All right. Let's come up closer to the camera. We can show you the difference here if they'll settle down. So you can see what you're looking at is the breast feathers here, right here on a female. It's going to be very speckled and, and brown, but on a male, it's going to be not as many speckles and it's going to have an orangish color to it. So female, male, female, male. That's how you tell the difference. And that's pretty much true of any of the feather sexable uh, varieties is that the females are going to have this speckled uh, breast and the males are not. So this is a female, we're gonna put it in the top cage. The male's gonna go down into our holding container for right now until we see what we have at the end. We had 11 of the jumbo wilds, we had six males and five females. So not what I was hoping for. Uh, so we're gonna keep the five females. We're gonna put one male in with them and the other males will go back in the bottom cage for now. Uh, and then they will end up being you know, processed for meat. So now because we didn't end up with as many of those as we had hoped, uh, those will probably be the first ones that we hatch more of uh, down the road. So we can expand the jumbo wilds because really the jumbo wilds are something that I, I want to have quite a few of. So those will be the first that we collect eggs from and hatch out more of. All right, let's move to the jumbo white wings next because they are the next ones in line as far as the numbers that we have. These are feather sexable as well. So we're looking for exactly the same thing that we did on the wilds. If it's a speckled breast, it's a girl. If it's more of a solid breast, it's a boy. All right, so here is one, because some of the white wings also have a white breast, which is okay. I mean, that's still considered how they're supposed to be, um, but it makes it hard to tell if that's supposed to be a male or a female. So this is one we're gonna try to vent sex to see if we can tell if this is a boy or a girl. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this one upside down. And we're gonna look at its vent and then we're gonna push. And if it's a boy, foam should come out, which it's not. So I'm gonna say that this one is a girl. All right, well, we didn't do a whole lot better on these than we did on the wilds. We have five females and seven males. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna keep, I'm gonna look for what I think is the biggest male. We're gonna keep the biggest male. All right, so we're gonna keep this male. He can go in with the girls. And then we're just gonna put the other males back in their original cage for now. All right, we're moving on to the jumbo Egyptians next. Now these cages are so easy to see inside of that. I'm gonna try to just grab females. First of all, we're gonna move the females over to the top cage that I just built.
All right, for the Egyptians, we ended up with uh, 10 females and 12 males. So we put the 10 females and two males over here in this top cage. Now we're gonna move on to the jumbo whites. We finished sexing all of the jumbo whites. We ended up with 16 females and 11 males. So what we decided to do is fill these two cages here. We put eight females and two males in each cage. And that completes sexing and sorting all of these quail. We ended up with 27 extra males that will end up in the freezer. So that's about four and a half meals worth of quail for our family. Uh, now that our one daughter is away to college, it's just the three of us. And we figure normally just two quail per person uh, is what we figure for a meal along with side items and everything else. So those 27 quail will be about four and a half meals for the three of us. So you guys, I am very excited. I'm not going to start collecting eggs from these guys for hatching for a few more weeks. I want to make sure that they're really laying well, that the males are mature enough that they're really doing their job. And then we'll start collecting eggs and hatching. The reason that I wanted to separate these all into pens by, by varieties like this is because I do want to try to keep hatching true varieties. So we're one step closer to being you know, set up to really start selling some quail eggs, some live quail, some hatching eggs. You guys, I am so excited. Hey, if you're enjoying our videos, you're enjoying this type of content, please hit that subscribe button before you leave. Don't forget that as always, the absolute best way you can help us is by sharing our videos. And until next time, thank you so much for stopping by our homestead. Take care and God bless.